Day three of NFL free agency is underway, and we even have a Broncos signing to report on here for you guys as Denver has added another man to the return man mix. We're going to break down that along with some Jerry Judy trade rumors potentially going to the Patriots, and then we'll discuss the idea of signing Darius Slay, some other free agent targets, and whatnot on today's show. But let's start things off with the latest in free agency as Mike Kliss reported Source confirms Broncos have reached agreement with cornerback slash returner Trayman Smith on two-year contract that has a max value of five and a half million dollars. So instant reaction here. If I'm Montreal, Washington, yikes. You were drafted last year for one reason and one reason only to be the kick and punt returner. That was it. Maybe a couple gadget plays on offense, but once Hackett got fired, Rosberg took over. He made a couple of moves immediately, one of them being Montreal Washington was a healthy scratch. He was not going to be the returner for the last few weeks of the season, and it actually worked out pretty well for the Broncos. So it looks like Sean Payton is picking up where Rosberg left off, and we have some competition now for the return man job. He'll also be an outside corner, kind of buried on the depth chart. He's got great speed. He returned a kick back in 2021. I even think this is the guy who had a pick six or at least a pick off of Dak Prescott last season. But then again, who didn't? So we've got that for free agency news for you. Plus, we got some trade rumors. Let's get into that now. So Jeff Howe from The Athletic tweeted out two days ago on the first day of free agency, Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy's name has continued to come up in trade conversations per source. But Denver's price has remained high. Sounds like they're assessing his value before proceeding. So if they really are interested in trading Judy and they're not just fielding calls, but they're returning calls, right? Maybe they want to see what they can get for Judy, which I'll give you my opinion in a few minutes. But then we got this today. So two days later, fast forward. Jerry Judy has been a hot name this week. The Broncos asking price on Judy has been at least a first round pick per sources. Fast forward 30 or so minutes later, not even, and Jeff Howe tweets out, Sources, the Patriots have called about DeAndre Hopkins and Jerry Judy. So now we've got some real traction to the potential Jerry Judy, Jerry Judy trade rumors out there. When it comes to trading Jerry Judy, here's my stance. One, I don't really want to. He's a really good player. He's gotten better as the years have progressed. He ended the year on a high note. And you finally saw and started to see good glimpses of the first round pick, right? So I'm not really interested in moving on from Judy now when it seems like his best days are ahead of him. Two, and most importantly, all right, let's say they trade him for a first and like a fourth or something, okay? I don't think they're not going to get a first and a second. I don't think they're going to get a first and a third. Let's go with first and a fourth, the first round of day three. Ignore the fourth <laughs> after that long tangent. Where in the first round is it going to be, right? I'm looking at the NFL draft, and is it going to be the Patriots who pick 14? Is it going to be a team like the Giants who pick, what, 24, 25? There's a big difference right there. Jerry Judy was a 15th overall selection. If you want to move on from him, you might as well try and get what you gave up to get him, which was the 15th pick in the draft. 14 does check that box, which New England has. But ultimately, draft, draft, I mean, um, Draft picks are just lottery tickets. You're just hoping that 14th pick will be as good as Jerry Judy. But go talk to the Eagles about that with Jalen Rager or any other team in the history of the NFL draft. There are a lot of hits, but there are probably more misses in the first round than people realize. So for that reason, I'm not interested in trading away Jerry Judy. But let me know if you had to pick one to trade between Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, two names that have been very hot in the streets this week, revolving around trade rumors, who would it be? Sutton, who you're not going to get a whole lot for. Judy, who you will, but he's the better ascending player. Or no trade. You want to keep them both and screw the picks. Let me know in the comments section below. Moving on here, I had someone comment on yesterday's video. Hey, can you tell us how much cap space Denver has and free agent targets they can do with that money? Well, they had $10.5 million before they just signed Smith, so we'll bump it down to like $9.5 million. Now, they can clear some more money. 
Here are four ways to do that. R way number one, if you trade Cortland Sutton, you're going to open up $6.7 million. That could definitely land you a starter or two. If you trade away Garrett Bowles, which we heard rumors about a while ago, haven't heard much traction since, but I do wonder with, in my opinion, how poorly free agency has gone for the Bears in assessing the offensive line, would they be interested in trading for Bowles? That would clear nearly $10 million in cap space. If you release Jacob Martin, which now that you're not bringing back Draymond Jones, but you did get Zach Allen, I don't know if they're really in a spot where they want to start giving up more edge rushers. And plus, Peyton traded for him last year. Does he want to cut bait with the guy he gave up a, up a pick for just like six months later? Probably not. GMs can be stubborn about their moves. If you release Mike Parcell, Parcell, $3.5 million. So there is money to be made. You can also restructure contracts, although there's not really any good candidates to have a contract restructured because you're not doing it for Russell Wilson. You're not doing it for Sutton or Bowles. There's no guy on this roster who's making a lot of money that you feel confident will be on the roster for their entire length of their contract. So they can make some money by moving on from players, but I don't see many restructurings happening. Okay, moving on to some interesting free agency buzz out there. Let's talk about Darius Slay. So potentially by the time you're watching this, the Eagles have already cut Darius Slay. But as of right now, the reports are they will be moving on from the five-time Pro Bowl cornerback. Denver is in need of a corner after releasing Ronald Darby. And I've already seen it all over the internet. Could the Broncos look to trade, uh, look to pair up Patrick Sertan and Darius Slay and put together one of the best cornerback tandems in the NFL? We're going to break down this idea and more in just a second. But first, today's show is sponsored by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I personally gave them a try because I hated taking pills slash vitamins and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. So I went to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I take AG1 in the morning and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. It really helps me with starting my day on the right foot and getting into a healthier lifestyle. I start the day with making one great choice, AG1, and then more healthy decisions follow. Also, covering my nutritional bases for the day couldn't be easier, which is why I love Athletic Greens. I just mix a small scoop of AG1 with water, drink it first thing in the morning, done. I also really like that it costs them less than $3 a day. It's a very effective daily habit with great ingredients as well. So if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then check out Athletic Greens because they are giving you guys a free one-year supply of vitamin D along with five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Check it out. The link's in the comments and the description of today's show. It's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Now let's return to the Darius Slay segment of the show. Here's how the Broncos' current cornerback depth chart looks. I have to add Smith, they just signed on to, uh, signed on to it. But Pat Sertan, Damari Mathis currently shaping up to be your two starting outside corners. So would you want to sign Darius Slay to get an upgrade over Damari Mathis? I think there is some logic and reasoning behind that here. I mean, Darius Slay, for starters, look at his stats over the last four seasons. There's a reason why he's been a five-time Pro Bowler and one-time All-Pro corner. He's one of the best in the biz. Two straight seasons with three interceptions, numerous pass breakups littered all over the screen. He is simply one of the best outside corners. Philly is just moving on from him, I think, because he's 32. He had a big cap hit. They are doing a post-June 1st designation, most likely. And they had to bring back James Bradbury, so they had to clear some, move, uh, some money and maybe even sign C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Now, what does a Darius Slay contract projection look like for Denver or anyone else that's interested in him? If I had to give him my best stab, I'll go two years, $15 million. He's kind. He's old, right? He's 32, so he's not going to get a lot of money in free agency. Maybe I'm lowballing him just a little bit, but two years, 15, seven and a half. I mean, Denver could make this happen if they wanted to. So I'll give you my opinion on whether or not they should. But first, we are trying to reach 13,000 subscribers here on the channel. 
I need 394 people watching who have not subscribed to please go ahead and do so. I want to keep growing this channel and getting more subs because the way it works at Chat Sports is we've got a whole bunch of NFL channels, and whoever's got the, more, uh, the most subscribers, they get studio space. They get more content. So if you want more content, help me out by hitting that sub button, and in return, you help yourself out by getting free Broncos YouTube videos. When it comes to signing Darius Slay and having him be the other outside corner, Darius Slay is better than Damari Mathis. That's for sure. There's no one that's going to argue otherwise. But is Denver approaching a championship window where they are one corner away from going on a big run? I don't think so. I would rather see Mathis get those snaps, improve as a corner, so that he can continue to be a starting cornerback for the Denver Broncos and find out if he's a legit CB2 or not, right? Find out what you got in Damari Mathis. This would be a very different conversation if the Broncos went to the AFC Championship game last year and there's a surefire upgrade out there on the market. But I want to see what Denver has in Matt Mathis and see if he can be a legit starting cornerback on this team for years to come. Last year in 16 games, those are his stats. 65 tackles, 7 pass breakups. We all remember how much the Chargers picked on him on Monday Night Football and his real debut after Ronald Darby tore his ACL. I personally thought he had some growing pains throughout the season, but he did put together some good games down the stretch that made me believe, okay, this could be a legit starting NFL cornerback and not someone who was just born on third base and tossed into the fire. So what say you? Should the Broncos go out and sign Darius Slay? S for sign or P for pass? I think Darius Slay can make a lot of sense for a lot of other teams. For Denver, I don't think they're a 32-year-old cornerback away with one or two years left in the tank. I'd rather see the young guy get some snaps and prove, and we find out, hey, we might have something here with Slay and Sertan moving forward. Let's talk about some free agent targets elsewhere. So Denver is reportedly still looking for a center. They got a left guard, and they got a new right tackle. It looks like Lloyd Cushenberry is not going to be the team's starting center. So Ben Jones could be on the radar. He was a longtime um, Houston Texans and Tennessee Titans center. He was released by Tennessee. I'm guessing he'll either A, retire, or B, wait till August and see if a contending team has their center get hurt. My guess is he's not rushing to go play for the Broncos, but hey, he definitely would be an upgrade over uh, Cushenberry, no doubt about it, who was more or less, like, I kind of forgot about it, a healthy scratch last year. He got put on IR, and then he's like, I'm healthy. And they're like, no, you're not. You're still hurt. You're not coming back. And he's like, what the fuck? All right, let's look at some other free agent targets, starting with a few wide receivers. Jordan Poyer actually just re-signed with the Bills, so you can kind of cross him off your bingo sheet right now. None of those names really make a ton of sense to me. If they didn't re-sign Alex Singleton, maybe Wagner, that'd be fun, but they don't really have a spot there for him. I'll never say no to OBJ, but he's looking for a lot of money. Moving on to some other free agent targets still on the block. Orlando Brown, no. Yannick Ngakwe, probably too expensive. Levante David, same reasoning for Wagner. I'm not opposed to CJ Gardner-Johnson because the dude's awesome, but I'm also a decent, you know, member of the Caden Stearns fan club. And I think Caden Stearns and Justin Simmons can get the job done with a lot cheaper of a price tag. I would have liked Miles Sanders, but they went some AJP Ryan. There's Mike Gusecki from Miami. Uh, we'll see uh, if they want to add another tight end or if they want to roll with Albert O and Greg Dulcich. Um, here's an idea for you. Let's say they can't find a good center in free agency. Okay. You move Quinn Miners over to center and you sign... Sumalo, uh, Siamalo, excuse me, from Philadelphia, and you move him to right guard. That could be an option for Denver. Frank Clark, maybe, actually, I could see that adding some nice uh, depth to the trenches there. Darius Slay, um, yeah, we talked about him. And then there's Leonard Floyd, probably too much, uh, probably too much money. One guy that I didn't have on the list right there is Sheldon Rankins. I just want this to be a put the flag in the ground moment of the show where I say they should add another defensive lineman probably. They probably need to add some beef on the D-line. They added two big guys to the offensive line. You added Zach Allen. I still think you could, you know, live to add another rotational defensive lineman. I'm sure the Jets would like to have Rankins back after a good season last year, 
But if he does get away from New York because they're too busy signing all of Aaron Rodgers' buddies like Jordy Nelson and Donald Driver, maybe the Broncos could swoop in and get him. So let me know, who do you want the Broncos to sign? Give me a name down in the comments section below. Who you would like to see George and Sean Payton sign next in free agency? We'll quickly run through the free agency tracker thus far and get you guys caught up to speed on all the moves. So let's run through it, starting with Ben Powers, four-year, $52 million. Stidham to be the backup. Mike McGlinchey, baby, five-year, $87 million. And then the next screen here, Alex Singleton, uh, we'll throw that on screen for you now. Three years, $18 million. Love that move right there. I think the Zach Allen's a bit of an overpay, if I'm being honest. Samaj P. Ryan's like the best backup running back in the NFL the last four years. Plus, he doesn't fumble. So that's a good bonus right there. But I would have liked, I mean, if David Montgomery, by the way, got three years, 18, just $6 million a season, and you're paying P. Ryan like three and a half-ish, I would have splurged an extra $3 million to get David Montgomery. Just my two cents. And then there's Michael Burton, who was signed last night. I did a short on that, a fullback. Uh, also played with Sean Payton in New Orleans. Another sign they really want to run the football. And then Trayman Smith, who we mentioned at the top of the show. That's going to do it for us on this edition of the Broncos Breakdown. If we get more news, we get more rumors, we'll be sure to get back on screen for you guys and keep you in the loop. So hit that sub button, and we'll see you next time.